Hey, welcome to How To In A Few. Today we're gonna to take a look at how to program a keyless entry remote to GM product. This is a 2010 uh, Traverse. Uh, many other Chevy trucks and even some of the Cadillac Escalades work in a similar pattern, probably years ranging from around 2005 uh, to 2010. Be sure to check your car and make sure that that's actually possible. After 2010, in, in 2011, GM made it way more difficult and did not give the consumer the option to program new remotes. And you have to go to the dealer, it's pretty pricey for the remotes, and, uh, and also to program them. You can purchase these remotes from outside vendors, which I did. I, uh, I got a pack of two. Two remotes complete with batteries and two keys, blank keys, because you need a special chip key to get uh, keys made on these vehicles too. Um, so you can still purchase these for later models, but you will have to go to the dealer and they are going to take great pleasure in overcharging you uh, to program your remote to your car. But fortunately for us, the 2010, it's still possible to do it on your own and that's what we're going to uh, show today. So make sure your car can actually be programmed uh, before you try any of this, although I don't think you can mess anything up. Either you can do it or you can't do it. It's that kind of situation. I'll show you the uh, what we have in the packets and then we'll move to the inside of the vehicle and uh, we'll set it up to get ready to program two more remotes to this vehicle. All right, first thing I did was move the car out of the direct sun because it was just way too hot. And right, now I'm gonna open up. Pretty sure I got this on Amazon. Apparently it's through a dkprogram.com. Also locksmithfinder.com. I guess I'll give them a shout out. And you see we have a couple of remotes and keys. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the remotes out. And we'll go eventually go get these keys cut somewhere local. At like uh you know, discount place or something. A couple of key rings. And I'll set these up because we're going to need all three in order to do the programming. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is stick the key in the ignition and go to the on position. At that point, our air conditioner might try to come on, so we'll just turn that off. We'll focus on the display up there where it says range. Never mind that engine light. <laughs> we'll deal with that another time. Um, so we have range, and now we're going to use our information console button and press these until we find uh, something about relearning a remote. Alright, so apparently it's this button, the car with the um, little eye for information, and it now says press to relearn remote key. So we're going to hit the check button, and now it says it's active. Next thing we're going to do is go to our new remote, and we're going to press the lock and unlock button at the same time until we hear some chirps. All right, just heard a double chirp. It can take up to 15 seconds. Now we're gonna take our second one. And then we're gonna redo the one on the ignition switch. Probably should have took that off, but. All right, all of them should be synchronized now. We're just gonna turn our key off. And now we'll test it. All right, this is a real live test. Normally I always test things before I video, but let's see. So here's our old remote, and let's see if it locks. Okay, locks and the double lock actually blows the horn. All right, here's one of our new ones. 
and double for both. Man, I love it when things work on the first try. And our last remote. All right, we'll even try the back trunk. And it is opening. Okay, so I can't tell you how thrilled I am that that worked uh, and worked so easily. I now have three remotes. Uh, this whole thing started, we were shopping for cars recently, we decided we wanted one of these. It's a Lambda body uh, GM product. It's kind of a, a, a pretty beefy, a bigger SUV type vehicle because my wife was, uh, she had enough of the minivans. So uh, it's a little bit sportier. Um, it's a used car, that's how we, uh, that's how we roll around here budget wise. Um, but we were looking at a 2011 Buick, I think, it, well, I don't even remember the model, but it was a, a, a little bit more uh, uh, optioned vehicle as this, a little bit fancier, but it didn't have the remote, so I immediately looked to see, and I could get them, you know, they're relatively cheap on the internet, but I could not program them. So as things would have it, that car uh, kind of bucked a little bit when we were test driving it, so we sh shied away from that one, and eventually they had to pull another one off of, uh, well, they got it somewhere else. That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> I should tell you about how used car lots and dealers and all of them uh, work, but uh, suffice to say, they know what's wrong with cars. Uh, it's up to you to, to, to buy or beware, and uh, either have a mechanic check it or know enough about it. Um, to, to know that you're still getting a good deal. Anyway, this one did come with a remote and uh, conveniently with this year's model, I could program it myself. So I've now spent under $40. I have two remotes, I have two blank chip keys that I'll get cut for a couple of dollars at Walmart. So I will now have three sets of working uh, remotes and keys for this vehicle. All, um, you know, by the time we get the keys cut, we're probably talking about less than 50 bucks. So um, hopefully uh, this video helped you out, showed you how to program uh, your remotes. If you have a, a GM product within the age range of about 2005 to 2010, possibly others, um, you know, you can go through your little menu selection on the dash. And if you see that little option of relearning a remote key, then obviously your car uh, will do what we just did. So hopefully that helped. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next video. And I'll see you next time.